Hi, welcome to DFR Soft's in instructional tutorial on lot sampling. This is a great video if you're interested in lot sampling. And in DFR Soft, we have the theory of everything for design assurance in one tool. And we believe that uh, no matter uh, what, uh, what your interests are, that in order to do design assurance properly, you need to have all the tools at your disposal, and uh, you can do a great job at design with design assurance uh, uh, using this tool, and it will also broaden your capabilities um, in whatever you're trying to do, whether you're a quality engineer, reliability engineer, or uh, working in that area for some other reason. And um, all the tools are listed: reliability, quality tools up here, for example. Uh, uh, we have a physics of failure library, uh, things like that. Let's just go over the menu, take a quick, brief look at all the, th the things that will help you in your tasks. Um, this is the reliability tool area. You have your statistical distributions, field returns, uh, system reliability. A lot of quality engineers are using doing system reliability these days. Availability and sparing is another important area for quality engineers. Reliability predictions are helpful in that area. And uh, you know, as well as software reliability, uh, growth, and things of that nature. Here's the quality tools. Um, likely, more often than not, we have a lot of quality engineers interested in this tool. And we're going to be talking about lot sampling. That's module 22. All the modules are numbered, and they correspond to the numbers down below on the tabs. You can hyperlink to that, or you can tab over. Um, in this module, also, we have design of experiments. Uh, and all the quality tools like uh, uh, CPK and normality analysis, uh, as well as your engineering tools so you're not in the dark, no matter if you can converse on any subject, thermal analysis, vibe shock and vibration, uh, ESD, corrosion control, uh, electrical analysis. And we have the physics of failure library and design for reliability and quality library, which will help you uh, do lots of different tasks. For example, uh, visual inspection for design release, a lot of quality engineers are interested in that, to rating guidelines of that nature. So uh, let's just get to it. Uh, we're, here's our quality tools, and we're going to hyperlink over to uh, lot sampling, uh, module 22. And notice the first thing you'll see, you get all the uh, pop-up help instructions, uh, plus this uh, excellent video that you can go to uh, at any time. So before we get started at this, let's go look at a, a, a slide presentation so uh, we can all have the same terminology and understand lot sampling a lot better. So um, there's two kinds of lot sampling plans that are too commonly used, a hypergeometrical distribution and a binomial. Uh, they're slightly different. The hypergeometrical uses uh, three parameters, uh, lot size, and you take a sample from your lot size, small n, and there's your acceptance number C. <clears throat> so you want to uh, take some small uh, sampling number from your lot or some reasonable sampling number from your lot and determine uh, if the defects is greater than C. And if it's not, then you accept the entire lot. <clears throat> now hypergeometrical is commonly used when N is grossly bigger than small n. The binomial plan only has two parameters N and C. It's somewhat simpler, and most a lot of people use that. <clears throat> uh, so uh, n is the sample size, small n, and c is the acceptance number. Uh, typically, it's used when large n is so much bigger than n that uh, the two distributions are almost the same anyway. So you can use either the binomial or hypergeometrical. <clears throat> DFR Soft has a little equation that we make a comparison, and we try to say, well, at least they should be 95%, or if they're not, comparable but by 95% use the uh, <clears throat> hypergeometrical. You can also look at the OC curves in DFR soft between these two and make comparisons you can tell that way or look at some values. There's always a risk, a risk that a lot could be wrongly rejected. So a lot of good quality uh, because you're taking a sample and there's some possibility though that the actual number of defects however small could exceed uh, this, the C criteria, which could lead you to a decision to reject um, a good lot. <clears throat> this is called the producer or manufacturer's risk because they have to uh, deal with the cost of that. <clears throat> There's a risk of lot acceptance for a bad lot uh, because uh, you're doing sampling again and the number of defects found in the sample uh, could actually um, 
give you, make a decision <clears throat> that uh, the bad quality lot, the, the number of defects that you found is not very many uh, and, uh, compared to C and could cause you to accept a bad lot. The OC curves helps you to characterize uh, that uh, those risks. So there's two other numbers that are important. There's the AQL uh, number, lot tolerance percent defect number. So the AQL number is a value that is found such that you only have a nine, you have 95% chance of proper probability of acceptance. And the lot tolerance percent defect number is a standard value that's used. Uh, so you only have a 10% chance of probability acceptance or a 90% chance of proper lot rejection. These two values are usually recorded in your sampling plans <clears throat> and uh, help you make determinations. So let's go over to DFR Soft and get an idea of what a lot of sampling plan here. And <clears throat> um, you notice there when you get the lot sampling plan, there's all these helps. There's three good examples to help you understand it. There's lots of pop-ups around this area here. And don't be deceived, it looks like a very small little area of DFR soft, but this is a very powerful tool. It does a lot of things that other uh, that you may not be able to find. The old military specifications were very complicated and this simplifies things quite a bit. Now let's look at a sampling plan and an example here. <clears throat> let's say we have a lot of 300 and we're going to sample from that about 30 units. And let's set uh, C for 1. For example, so uh, DFR Soft does a search, and it find, uh, well first let me mention that uh, let's how do you know whether to use the hypergeometric or the binomial for this? Well, down here is a, a little comparison between small n and big n, and, uh, and there's a 90% uh, comparison between the two, and uh, so it recommends to use the hypergeometrical because there's a reasonable difference greater than 95%, <clears throat> and you'll see that now um, between the two. Uh, so it does a search, uh, DFR uh, soft does, uh, it's a binomial search, and it finds the binomial values for the AQL value for a 95% chance for lot acceptance, and that value is 1.2%. And the lot tolerance percent defect uh, value that is found in DFR soft for the binomial is 10, uh, for 10% is 12.35. Let's verify one of these numbers. This is the area where you can put in any lot percent defects and uh, see what your results are for your binomial. So we'll put in 12.35 because we know that should be around 10% probability of acceptance. That's the LTPD uh, value and there you have it. It's dead on for the binomial, not quite dead on for hypergeometrical because remember we found that these two distributions were somewhat different. So you might have to play around with this number because it's going to be close. But let's say you put in 12 here. It's a lot closer. It's closer to 10%. So you might want to record 12 if you're using the hypergeometrical uh, assessment. Now uh, let's make some sense out of this a little bit better. Let's put in 1%. This is let's say we have some inclination that's good that we have good manufacturing practice, and uh, we feel there's only 1%. Uh, defects in our lot. Well, uh, now we're going to ask the question, what is the probability that uh, we, only, we only have 1% out of 300 uh, says we only have three bad units in this lot. Well, what, if, uh, two, what is the probability that two of them could show up in this sample? That would, If we had two, that would be bigger than our C value of one. So that would force us to reject this whole lot of 300. What is the probability for that to happen? Well, the probability is actually about, if you look at the hypergeometrical and the binomial, it's roughly about 3%. So there's 3% chance, even though you only have 1% defects, that you could actually reject this lot and cost you money. If I raise the C value, so there's less chance uh, for those units to show up, I mean, all three now would have to be there. Uh, you can see that the chance for <clears throat> Rejecting the lot with only 1% is down to about point, is under, way under 1%. It's about 0.1% for the hypergeometrical. Now, what if this was a really bad lot and it had 10% defects? And we had one here. So we have 10% defects. 10% is 30 units that are bad. Well, we certainly would want this lot to be rejected. And we take a sample of 30, 
but there's still some probability now that we're actually going to accept a bad lot <clears throat> with 30 and 1. And the probability of acceptance is down here. It's 18%, or in the hypergeometrical, it's about 17% chance that we would actually accept this. So what we could do is we could raise the sample size, maybe 50. And now we're doing a better sampling. And we went from about 17%. There's only a 2% chance that we would accept this lot with 10% defects. So now you see the value of raising and lowering uh, these numbers. So uh, we also have, uh, so there's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. You have your examples. You also have your outgoing quality uh, limits, uh, uh, limit value, AOQL, and your outgoing quality for both the hybrid symmetrical and the binomial. For this, whatever number that you specify here, this 10% value, and it also gives it to you in parts per million, etc. So you have a lot of very good, uh, you can see this is a very powerful tool and uh, you can use all kinds of different what-if games and change you know, your values to three or, or more and make comparisons between your hypergeometrical and your binomial and look at your OC curves 